Guys. What? Did you hear about 20 new species discovered in the Andes by 17 scientists? Forrest, what the fuck? Dude, I When was, do we discover 20 this, new species This news ever? dropped. I'm actually amazed. You saw it, Rutab. It dropped like 25 minutes ago. I mean, this is fresh off of the presses. I'm super excited fresh. by it. Uh, yeah, so it was an expedition by 17 scientists up into the Andes. Um, they found 21 new species in total, including the incredible Bolivian Ooh, flag snake, this beautiful green animal, uh, into an area. And it was a mix. It was a mix of previously thought to be extinct animals, brand new species. I mean, just absolutely incredible. Will, pull up, uh, pull up the flag snake that he's talking about, producer Will. So, first of all, yeah. so they were in the Andes in Bolivia. So this is South yep. America. Yep. What do we know about the Andes? I've never been there. I, I know there are mountains, I guess, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So it's a mountain range that at the base of which is is jungle um, for the most yeah. part. And then, you know, as you climb up, you get into, you know, at the tips of the Andes, snowy Patagonia-like mountains. So it's, um, yeah, no, it's a very high chunk of vertical relief, you know, and, and the habitat shifts tremendously between, you know, the top of the Andes and the basin in which the Bolivian jungle takes place. Is, is this a common, like, so let's say you send 17 scientists out in another part of South America or somewhere else, Southeast Asia, somewhere. Is this just, would this ever happen? I, I've never heard of something like yeah, this. 21 I mean, on one expedition is. That's a lot. So first of all, these are badass scientists, right? Because these expeditions are tough. I've done, I've done plenty of them. They suck, right? And if you're racking up 21 species, <laughs> you are out there for a hot minute and it's not easy, right? The reason that nobody else has described these 21 species is because it's too shitty to go there and spend time there, right? Like that's, that's typically uh, how these things work. You know, in the days of Charles Darwin, you just kind of go somewhere new and it's like, oh, cool, look at all this new shit, right? Today, you got to really <laughs> suffer through it to, to be cataloging new stuff. But when you have a transitional yeah. zone like that, where it goes from dense rainforest up into, you know, montane tundra, you have those transitional zones are hotspots, right? Because anything that's transitional in habitat is always a hotspot for biodiversity. So I'm guessing, and I actually haven't even read it. I mean, it literally just came out, like the news just dropped, but I'm guessing these guys targeted a certain elevation that hasn't been studied that well. Um, they went there, they started mm. really digging into it, right? Like what kind of snake is this? What kind of frog is this? What kind of lizard is this? And turns out 21 of them had never been cataloged before. It's fucking crazy to think. Like, it's we, crazy. We know everything, right? Like we right. as humans, yeah, we've got Google Earth, we've got satellite images, <laughs> kind of look around, we know what's there. Right. Before I had been on, I, I can only think of two, but one in Madagascar with the frog. Yep. And one in the cave mm -hmm. in Vietnam with the snail. I right. yep. found undescribed species on a schedule of cable TV, which gives us two weeks or three weeks to be in right. a place. I don't know how long these people had, but it's just so bizarre how much unexplored territory there is on earth with 8 billion humans. It's right. crazy, man. It's crazy. We so, don't know it all. Yeah. People think we know it all. And the other thing is like the minutia, right? Paying attention to the minutia. Like how many people would just walk by that little green snake and go, oh, that's a little green snake, right? How many people actually took sure, the time to look at it, key it out, whatever it would take, and describe it as a new or lost species? And that minutia is a new frontier of exploration, right? So not to, not to take yeah. away from what you said, Patrick, like you're right, there are still these vast chunks of the world that are unexplored. But on a micro scale, there are also these vast chunks of the world that are unexplored, meaning like, if you don't just look at like, hey, I've never been to this this rainforest. Nobody's ever walked in before. Cool, people have walked in it. But then when you flip over the log, how many people have looked at everything under that log in that rainforest? The minutia of detail right. of speciation at that level is like the next frontier of discovery. And that's why, you know, they're not coming out of the Bolivian Andes going, hey, we found 12 new hippo species, right? They're not gargantuan <laughs> animals, you know? It's, yeah. it's little snakes and little frogs and little oh. lizards trees it's cool as shit don't get me wrong i'm not downplaying it but it's the minutia that i think is making right. such a big difference well, speaking of little animals will pull up the picture of the lilliputian frog so this is a reference to a famous piece of literature in which there were these little tiny people called lilliputians it's a literally it's a fucking tiny it's frog. so cute it's so it's cute tiny. look at it. it's beautiful so how big is this frog like the size well, of a quarter basically human thumbnail 
You can see he's standing on oh, moss, Jesus. right? That's... Like, look at the moss. That's okay. moss that you're seeing. Yeah, you see yeah. the little, like, tiny swirls? That's like in your eye, that mm -hmm. would be, you know, a couple millimeters. So that is a tiny little frog. He is adorable. So for, yeah. By, yeah. you know, you, you work with academia all the time. And the people that actually get to name these things and make it official, the genus and yep. species, oftentimes they're named after the person who discovers them. If yep. I discovered, uh, you know, a little frog, right, and I wanted to name it the cocksucker frog, could I do that legally? Totally could. You'd, you'd need to do it in Latin, but you could. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. I, and and typically you Well, you I'm would, glad you're not discovering And typically you would only name, name it that if that had some kind of uh morphological or descriptive behavior. So say you found it down your pants and you wanted to call it the <laughs> cocksucker frog, you know, cockiest, suckiest, froggiest, so sure. to speak, you sure. know, in Latin, you're you're clear to go, man. Yeah. You're good you're good to rumble. That thing is cute as shit. Now is is it just because it sounds more scientific why they have to actually translate it into yeah. the Latin? Or is it just because they're arrogant pricks in academia? That's a good question. Um, well, no, the reason being in English and, and in regular spoken language, there's too many common names, right? So you could call that the Lilliputian frog. Some guy comes along and calls it the lily frog for short. You know, before you know it, there's 25 different, the two That's, different okay. names, All right. common names. Whereas in yep. Latin, which is a written language, you write it once. Of course, the Latin is done, you know, you can't, like that frog, once it's genetically tested, you'll know what family, what order, what suborder, what class, et cetera, it belongs to. So you're only naming the species. Right. So it already has a whole list of names. You're basically just giving it a surname, right? You're just giving it that end little bit. All right. So let me throw Cacksuckerus yeah, That's right. <laughs> Sounds great. For us. Pardon uh, me? Uh, let me throw this out there. So the, these, this group of 17 scientists uh, found 21 new species on an expedition yep. in one area in the Andes and Bolivia. So you have to beat them. You have to discover 22 new species. Uh, you no can problem. bring 16 other scientists with you. Yep. You have to pick a place. Where would you go? Where is the fucking next frontier of undiscovered species? Mm -hmm. No problems. Papua New Guinea Highlands, <laughs> area where science has a hard time getting to. They're getting murdered by rebels and cannibals and everything else. Every expedition that ever goes to Papua New Guinea turns up a new species or two or three. You go there with a group of 17 scientists who all know the species they're looking for. Study that minutia that we talked about. Coming out of there with an easy 30. And, and who don't get killed. That's right. That too. Wow. Yeah, Papua New Guinea. What kind of – what would you expect to come out of Papua New Guinea? Yeah. What would be I like – obviously. No, I look, I think I, – I, I honestly <laughs> – and I, look, I want to turn this question on to you guys because I think it's pretty interesting to hear from someone who's not just like super buzzed in on the scientific community. But um, I, I think there would be megafauna des described out of Papua New Guinea if the right expedition was done. Yeah. So I'm not so talking about – Go into more detail on that because most people don't know what megafauna means. Sure. I'm saying that if – like a dinosaur? No, or well, sort of. I mean, I'm saying bird. that if we led an expedition into the remotest part of the Congo, Papua New Guinea, certain areas of Peruvian Amazon, it wouldn't just be little frogs and snakes. And I'm not downplaying this because it's an incredible discovery. You know, insects, plants. Yeah. I'm saying that there are still megafauna out there to be discovered. Megafauna being large animals. Like I'm talking, you know, undulates, like things with hooves. Uh, species of canines like dogs, species of cat, they're still out there. There's not a lot. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. we, we know a lot. But shit, they just discovered a new whale species, you know, right. off of the San Benitos Islands in Mexico like two weeks ago. They're like, right. hey, there's a whole new whale species. You know, they're still out there. There's megafauna to be found. And I'm saying Papua New Guinea, don't get me wrong, 99% of it's going to be the small stuff, but I think there's a couple big things to be found there still. All right. Well, we have to do a very good uh, thing we film. Just whatever yeah. that is. Let's just fucking do it for wild times. Let's do it. On this YouTube channel. Yeah, we should. Fuck cable. Uh, fuck network I'm television. In. I'm in. I'll be out there in a if hammock. new to the Wild Times podcast. Ugh, he's going to say it. All the time, we have a podcast on iTunes. Fucking like and subscribe. Damn it. He always says yeah. it. It's so lame. <laughs> Don't do that. Just so check gross. out the podcast, the Wild Times podcast. Patrick's a whore. Good night. Good night.